it's Samantha from Jason Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you a fun technique using Primo polymer clay and some sage leaves. Now you can use any leaf that you want so long as it has a decent uh, texture on the back. Sage leaves are my favourite but you can use mint, tomato leaves, those will work as well. I've got two colours here and this is Primo as I said before. This one is equal parts black to equal parts ultramarine blue. This one is two parts ultramarine blue to one part peacock pill. I'm just going to show the original colours quickly. Thank you for one moment. So here's the peacock pill and here's the ultramarine blue and the black. So those are the colours that you work with to create these colour recipes. So again. Equal parts black to equal parts ultramarine, uh, two parts ultramarine to one part peacock pill. Then all we're going to do is we're going to be making a skinny blend. So I'm just going to fold these into a triangle. And I double layered that one because it was a little large. So I'll just double layer them. There we go. Just trim away your extra because you will have extra and we'll use the one triangle that we have created here to resize this one and all I do is I just pop it on top and trim away the extra so that they are the same size. You can also use triangle cutters to do this as well, makes it easier but uh, this is plenty easier as well. That up, then pop them together, leaving a little bit of the original colour sticking out on either side, and you'll make a Skinner blend with that. And I have taught how to create Skinner blends before in great detail. Uh, just look up Skinner blend on the channel, and you'll find multiple tutorials on how to do that. Okay, and you should end up with something that looks like this. Now the cutter that I'm using, here is the cutter, you can see that it's really, uh, the skinny blend is a little too big for it. So the way we fix that is just fold it over like you have been the entire time, get rid of those air bubbles, fold it over again so that you make it nice and thick. And I'm just going to tap in the sides, remove the air bubbles. And what you can do is you can just kind of press it into itself and that will shorten it up quite a bit. You could also create a Skinner Blend plug, it's a little bit longer of a process. But I also have tutorials for that on the channel. This is my preferred method but of course you can do a Skinner Blend plug, that works too. Now I'm just going to go back here and check. And then we'll just run this back through the pasta machine. And that should just about do it. Run that back through and then we can move on to the next step. And there we go. Now I've just got this sitting on a piece of plain printing paper just so that we can move it around. I'm going to grab my cutter and I want to set it at an angle. Now I'm not going to cut this out immediately. I just want to work out whereabouts I'm going to want to cut it out. Press in a very light line and then grab your bay leaves and I've got a few here and it really depends on what you want. It also depends on uh, how well it fits. I think I'm going to use this one because I think it's quite interesting that it's got the uh, little uh, eaten away parts. And you can either go with it being to the side like so. Bring that in. And then I've got another little one here which I think would look nice down here. Okay, place those down round about where you want them. Then I'm just going to bring over a piece of paper and just burnish these right into the clay so that we get that texture. And also so that they're just sitting in the clay. Good. 
do a little more up here. And there we go. That should do. Okay. Then we're going to... Actually, we're going to put this down first where we're going to be putting it. I can see there's a little air bubble here. I'm just going to cut across the clay, smooth that out. And if that happens, you do want to just burnish that down again. Just because it will have made a mark. But there we go. I'm going to put this round about where I am going to cut out my piece and I'm going to trim away the extra blend. Now this is not getting wasted, this is still very usable, you can just recycle that straight back into a skin blend and I'll show you right now how you can do that. You'll just pop that straight back into place and if you run that through the pasta machine again a few times you'll have a usable blend. I'm also going to cut away a lot of the top part and that will be a colour that you can still use. Because what we're going to do next is pick up the bay leaves and then add some gold leaf. Well these are sage leaves, I keep calling them bay leaves, I do excuse that. I was wondering what was um, bugging me there. These are sage leaves. But you'll pick them up. Try to get it as clean as possible. You can always pick out the extra bits, but pulling it all out at once is satisfying and it's just ultimately easier. And then we can add gold leaf. And I've got some gold leaf right here. Just lay that over the top. I'm going to grab a big poofy brush and I'm just going to press that onto the surface. And I don't worry, I know that it's covered up everything, that's fine. Really press that in. So, okay, then that is not going to completely uh, stick to all of it. So, just try to get as much of it on as you can. But to compensate for uh, the missing gold bits, I am going to use some gold mica powder. And the gold, just the gold leaf will give a extra shine, and that is why I'm not just using plain old mica powder just to begin with. Um, just because, let me uh, move this around, and you'll see that it just has an extra gleam to it. Hopefully, you can see that it's really sparkling off of that leaf. Okay, and we're going to be doing a little sanding later on to remove it from the outside area here, so don't worry about that. And now just brush away the excess and make sure that those leaves are completely gold. Okay. Okay. Now I am... Um, let's see. I am going to trim away the excess leaf here just because it is a bit in the way and is going to float into areas it should not be so I will trim away the extra leaf uh, that's up to you next step is going to be to apply a liquid clay pattern this is optional uh, but it does create quite a nice effect yeah, just remove that extra then we've got this nice sorry ribbon and I'm going to set it at a opposite angle to the um, leaves now the, don't press this down too hard because you don't want it to interfere with your uh, leaf texture. And I'm going to bring over some Kato Clear Liquid Clay. You can use um, any translucent liquid clay you want, uh, so long as it's translucent. I prefer the Kato one because it leaves a little bit of a shiny finish when you're finished with it. So that's why I'm using that. 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a very small brush because I don't want to get too much here. And I'm just going to pat, tap, down through the stencil a little bit. Now what's going to happen is once we've baked it, that liquid clay is going to go translucent, but it's also going to protect the gold leaf. So that when we go to sand, some of the pattern will remain. So I'm just going to do a few swirls. I don't want too many. And this is completely optional. You can use any pattern you want. I just think this will look cool. Okay. Then just lift it up. And you'll have some of that pattern there. Now it's not going to be uh, perfect. Make sure you use a pattern that isn't particularly precise because it will leak through the stencil because you haven't pressed down fully but it will leave an interesting pattern. Then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to cut like I planned to. And you can still use that, um, it's just going to have a little bit of metal leaf with it. I'm going to transfer this over to a different piece of paper because this one is covered in metal leaf and is a bit of a mess. But I'll pop it on a different piece of paper, tap around the edges but be careful because you've got metal leaf there. And bake that for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. So now we're going to do a little bit of sanding. I've got an 800 grit wet dry sandpaper here and usually I'll do this by a sink. I'm just showing you this now but you should do this under a body of water. And you shouldn't need to do too much. Mainly focus on the outside area. Like so. And this is going to remove a lot of that uh, metal leaf. And that liquid clay is just going to have left a little bit of a pattern. You're not going to get a very specific pattern. It's just so that you have patches of metal leaf really. And just continue sanding along the outside. I also will sand a little bit on the leaves just to highlight like so and just continue until you're happy really okay so I've sanded it and I decided I didn't like the gold on the uh, blackish blue areas so I just ended up sanding off all of that if you like the pattern then keep it but I ended up just not really liking it all that much so now we've got our uh, little leaves and I want to actually create a border so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over our Skinner Blend from earlier and I've just run that through the pasta machine a couple of times and this will allow us to essentially recycle it and I'm just going to pop it at an angle I'm not worried about it being uh, perfect actually let me put this on a piece of paper first before I do this that way I'll be able to move it around. There you go, just squish it on. If you're using the raw clay you should be all good without uh, popping liquid clay and such. Pop that to the side, we will use that in just a bit. Next step is going to include a extruder and the dark kind of black colour mix that we had before. Just go pop that into the extruder, cut away the extra. I have a circle disc and the other side of my extruder. Pop that onto the end and you can roll out a uh, length of clay if you want to. This just creates a nice even uh, piece and it come, and it's a lot quicker. So just tighten using the screw and then you'll have a nice length of clay come out. 
sorry, it's a little squeaky. There we go. That should be more than enough. Bring over our piece of paper again. All I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the piece. And you are going to have to join it up. And all I do for that is I'll lay it against, generally speaking, the bottom of the piece or the top, but that's just my preference. Cut at a little bit of an angle. Bring around this side as well. Cut this also at an angle. Generally, it's easier if you just move that out the way. also an angle and you may have to do a little bit of trimming so just bear with me for half a second while I trim away the extra clay there it can be a little finicky but I think it's a nice way to create a border here we go and you should be able to fold that pretty much into place Then I'll just use a very small ball tool to help me just smooth out that seam. And sometimes you'll get it cleaner, sometimes it won't be as clean and you'll need to do more cleaner. Generally just fuss on that end to smooth that out. You can use your fingers to really smooth it as well. Like so. And once you've got that smoothed out, just take a craft knife, a nice sharp one, pop it down, and generally I will rotate the paper rather than the knife. I just find that it gives me more control. And I will cut around that border. Like so. And you'll just do that the whole way around, cutting out the backing, and just go slowly. I'm almost done, so I will just just bear with me for a moment. There we go. Remove that, and then you want to go around because there will be some unevenness. And so just go around and smooth it with your blade or trim away any extra bits that you really missed. Uh, but yeah, just go in, smooth that off. And then we're going to bake that for another 40 minutes at least at Primo's recommended temperature. And then we can assemble. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. So it backs nice and clean, not going to worry about sanding that. Uh, I am going to be applying some resin to the front though. That's not completely necessary. You can use a gloss varnish. You do want to seal in the mica powder and metal leaf though. I'm going to be using this UV resin. I'm just going to apply that around. And I'm going to see if I can keep it off the border just because I think it will look nice. But if that doesn't happen, that's fine. And you can see, hopefully on the camera there, how much that resin is bringing out the metallic in there. That should be enough. And then I'll just use this to spread the resin around. Like so. Okay, and here it is, out of the UV light. I put it in a, under a UV light while the uh, resin is still wet for about 15 minutes to cure it completely and it should be rock hard. And then we can move on to the last step before we can assemble that, which is to add a bale. And for that I'm just going to be adding a stick on bale. 
and I'll just add it to the top over here and it'll be a nice clean bale without us having to drill the sides or the front so what you're going to need is some glue for that I've got some two part epoxy glue here which works very well just make sure you do this in a well ventilated area because this glue stinks just squeeze some out there we go cover that up again okay you can put this to the side so I don't end up mixing it in there and I'm just going to mix that up and you don't need a lot this is actually quite a bit here yeah? I'd highly recommend making a couple of pendants and then doing the glue stage so that you can use uh, the glue multiple times because this is enough for like at least five pieces if not more just because you need very little okay that should do bring this over flip it grab our bale and I just bought this off of Amazon just type in stick on bales and just some, apply some to the top and cover the entire space in the middle and we don't even need all of that And I'll just place that on and it won't seal immediately you have a bit of time to move it around and I also will check the front very quickly to see that it is in the right spot okay and then you're just going to leave that for a full hour to cure Here we go. Nice, easy, clean bale. I've left this for around six hours just to make sure that it's really nice and strong in there. I would actually leave it a complete 24 hours before uh, actually wearing it just to make sure that that glue is completely dried. To string it, I'm just going to simply use this rubber cord. Nice and easy. You can use any cord that you want, but I think this is nice and simple and works well. But yeah, that is basically it. Very simple, easy pendant. Uh, that silk, excuse me, not silk screen, stencil technique where you put the liquid clay over the gold leaf. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work this time around, so you can feel free to skip that step if you want to. Also, if you don't like the gold, you can easily use silver leaf as well. Any color metal leaf if you want. You can change the background, use different leaves. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this technique. But yeah, I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.